the people in this room at this time, to my mind, represent the most important people in the world of asbestos. It's not about one person, it's about an organization that comes together with experts from literally across the United States and around the world. ADU has a unique opportunity to be a leader, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world, to help work on education and prevention. Part of the reason why Linda and I uh, co-founded uh, the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization was because we, uh, we saw that there was a need for a resource uh, that was independent of, of influence, that was, that was simply uh, science and medically based facts. And the mission that, that we started with uh, holds true today. It is truly an honor and a privilege to represent the Asbestos Workers Union and speak at the fourth annual Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization. Let us also all agree that there is no known safe level of exposure to asbestos. This is a group and this is a room filled with many people that I truly admire. Now, since we're spending millions of dollars to tear out the asbestos in the Canadian Parliament buildings to protect you guys from breathing this stuff, don't you think we should stop shipping it to the poor countries of the world? This organization stepped up with real life stories and I'll never forget those meetings, sitting down with families and survivors and people who were telling me what happened. So thanks to ADAO for all they do to keep us aware of the reality of asbestos related disease and death. Having a support group, having friends, people going through the same thing who understand how you feel is just such a nice and comforting experience to go through and just makes the process so much easier. I think it's very important to bring that awareness out. Uh, and then you look at the other countries like Mexico, et cetera, uh, what we learned about Canada. I mean, it's disheartening to see that even decades later, people are still not realizing the dangers with asbestos. Asbestos is causing it. Why do we still have it? Why is it still being brought into the country? Why aren't we taking it out of schools? And this is now, this is, you know, our days, our time. ADAO has been something that's been a really big part of my life and an important part of my life since then because it gave me this kind of second home to come back to. Awareness, efficacy and support are a big part of my living with this cancer. Sometimes it takes either a pro profound experience or an emotional connection to facilitate that change. The issue is near and dear to the Office of the Surgeon General. The idea that we're here to work together on making this nation better. We're going to work the halls and we're going to work both sides of the aisle. We're going to spread the word. My husband died from an unnecessary disease that was caused by asbestos and I want to see asbestos gone. We have to continue our struggle worldwide. No chance to give up. I'm that living statistical anomaly. Uh, probably in every way possible I can think of. Uh, and, uh, and so even though Lou and Mavis and I have survived on Keytruda, uh, we know that we are the statistical outliers. To reveal some of our personal experiences and maybe help some other people on the lessons we learned through that process. All the patients, doctors, caregivers, lawyers, and volunteers we have met at these conferences truly give us hope as we continue to fight against this asbestos internationally. As we proposed at NIOSH in 1976, we need to ban asbestos in this country. Candle lighting is a very important part of what we do at ADAO as we conclude our conference. I think it's memories that heal us. I think it's keeping those memories alive that actually continue to give us hope. A rare thing for a grassroots organization like ADAO to not only thrive and prosper as you have, but to survive at all, frankly. So many well-meaning grassroots activist organizations collapse under their own weight after a number of years. I directly my appreciation for the great work that you are doing every day to save lives here in America. Your work to educate families and communities about how to protect themselves is invaluable. You are truly saving lives.